Nick Bolstrom's recent book, Super Intelligence, is perhaps one of the best books written on friendly AI and artificial intelligence. The idea of friendly AI is simply we don't want an artificial intelligence that isn't friendly towards humans, and therefore we need to study intelligence in an abstract manner, not in a wishy-washy manner that philosophers like to think of intelligence as. If you want a good example of wishy-washy thinking in consciousness, you can listen to Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett debate consciousness. These are very uneducated forms of looking at intelligence or consciousness. Consciousness is really a non-issue from an artificial intelligence point of view. Whether something is or isn't conscious from an artificial intelligence perspective is doesn't matter. And we need to be aware of that when we think about the problems and the external danger that artificial intelligence poses. Now, of course, robots could displace workers, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. If intelligence can accelerate its own intelligence, there's we don't know how quickly it could evolve into a super intelligence. So there's a lot of variables that go into um, artificial intelligence, and Nick does an extremely good job of exploring all the different ways of looking at the problem. Um, it may seem like an extreme view at some times, but he's trying to isolate the basic concepts of all the externalities that can affect. Now, the other thing about this particular book is that I really think it's for anyone that deals in reason or wants to be reasonable, whether you're an atheist or whether you're um, working for social justice, the book is helpful in looking at an alien example of system logic and the problems of any um, extreme position, what can happen. Um, in terms of ethics, a good example I like to use is the concept of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, if that person happens to be a, um, a sadist or a um, masochist, what they would do would be different. So a masochist wants you to hurt them. You know, a sadist wants to hurt you. So there's no balance in that particular want. You can't say do unto others. and um, It's going to always be a question of do unto others as they would do unto you. But that doesn't necessarily make the outcome what you're looking for. Um, so there needs to be some sort of agreement that... There isn't going to be a magic bullet in ethics, as there isn't going to be a magic bullet in artificial intelligence. There isn't going to be a magic bullet in society. When people look for those perfect solutions or perfect formula to establish um, better standards, and I think of this in men's rights movements, I think of this in ethic and atheism, um, people looking for, well, we need to have this perfect sort of solution. It's not going to be perfect. And probably the most important aspects of any social system is dialogue. And this is one reason that I've written and speak out on censorship. We need to be very careful about censoring ideas. Yes, they can have a profound impact on our message. But if our message isn't well balanced and isn't consistent with reality, then, then we're selling crap. And we need to be careful about selling crap. And there's a lot, plenty of people that want to sell their personal pet theories to other people. And I would suggest that dialogue is the key. And that would be true in artificial intelligence, too. I would say one of the most um, important aspects that we build into artificial intelligence is a sense of dialogue, in a, in, in, in a sense of we need to work with each other. So you would want your artificial being to be able to converse with you and understand what you need and understand what you want and want to cooperate with you, not want to go on its own necessarily. Now, whether that would work is a great debate and it's a part of looking at the problem of friendly artificial intelligence and what kind of artificial intelligence will we create. So anyways, I highly recommend the book for anyone that wants to do thinking and reasoning. It's a good way of getting outside of your personal perspective and looking at it from a very alien way. So if you're a thinker and you want to look at reasoning, read the book. Um, do audible.com. If you haven't done it, it's a free for the first time. So anyways, I'm, 
I get no money from Audible, just for the record on that. But I, it is the way I actually listen to the book. So take care, and we'll talk at you again.